Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Ruben. And in this video, we're going to be looking at pointers. So far, we've been using built-in data types and we're starting to look at custom types in order to uh, declare the kinds of data that we can store in the variables in our programs. Yeah, and re really that's been great because I've been using these custom data types in my programs to model different entities for different reasons, but is there a way that we can you know, link those entities together? Okay, one thing that we could do in order to to do that, there's a number of ways, but one thing that we could look at uh, is the use of pointers. And pointers can help us create flexible relationships between the data that we have inside our programs. Okay, that's cool. Um, because I've got this little program here and it's it's completely original. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it, it's great. It's, it's unique. It's a fantastic idea. And um, it's going to allow people to, you know, link up with their friends. And Sounds uh, very original. Yeah, look... Uh, it, great name for it too. I've I've called it uh, friend book. Oh yeah. And yep. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, but at the moment the limitations are that there's me. I can create you know a representation of me within the program and another person. But I'm I'm struggling to find a way to link me and that other person together. Okay. Yeah. So this does sound like a case where we can use pointers. But what what I think we'll do rather than looking at this example, why don't we have a look at, at something a little bit smaller to start with. Okay, and we'll yeah. have a look at the details of pointers uh, and then we'll come back and come back and look at this. So here's a little pointer basics program that I've written. And, and what we're doing in here is, is just demonstrating the different ways that we can use pointers. Okay, but um, before we go on, Andrew, what, what exactly is a pointer? Okay, that's a great question. So a pointer... Uh, is a is a, another data type. So we can create variables uh, or variables store a value. A pointer stores the address of some other value. So remember that all of these values actually exist somewhere in memory. Yep. And each location in memory is a unique location. The value inside a pointer is that location in memory. Okay. Uh, the, that's one way of thinking about it. Probably an easier way is to think about it as a pointer, like an arrow. Yeah. This variable points to another value. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go back over it again in a bit. Uh, hopefully it will make more sense. Yeah. All right, so what we've got in this program is a, a, a number variable and it stores an integer. Yeah. yeah. Then I have a, an i pointer variable and okay. it st stores a pointer to an integer. Right. So pointers, when we create pointers, they point to something. So this is a pointer that at the you know the address that it refers to should be storing a number, an integer value. Oh, so okay. If we follow that pointer, what we should get to is a number. So it doesn't actually store an integer; it stores the address of an integer. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it says there is an integer over there. Okay. Cool. And then it points. Yeah. Yeah. To to, to where where we're going. Uh, and we have another uh, variable here, y, which is also uh, an integer pointer. Yeah. All right. When the program executes, we can assign 100 to number. So that puts the value 100 in the number. Mm -hmm. When we print that out, we can read that value, and that reads back the actual value of that uh, variable. Now, if we want to store a value inside the i pointer uh, variable, iptr, uh, it's going to have to be a pointer. Okay. to an integer. So I can't put a number like 100 in there because that yeah. is an integer. But I need to store the address of a number. So we know that I have this integer variable number here. What we can do is get the address of that number variable. So notice the symbol there. That indicates that we want the address of that variable. Yeah. So I'm not after the value of that variable. I want to know where that variable is in memory. Okay, sure. And that will get the address of that and store that in the i pointer variable. And we can think about that now as i pointer points to the number variable. Yeah. And so if we uh, then print out, you know, i pointer points to a value, we can follow the pointer. We do that using this symbol. Uh, and that means read the value, which is an address. Yep, so i pointer is the address. We then, with that other symbol here, we follow that pointer. So that means 
go to that address. Yeah. You know, actually go there and read the value that's there. So this is going to print out the value 100 because that's the value stored in the number variable. Okay. But we didn't actually, notice we didn't use number on that line. We used I pointer. Yeah. Uh, but we then followed that pointer to print out where it is. Now we can actually also print out the value of I pointer. So this is now going to print out well, what is the address that it refers to. Okay. So that will print out the address in memory where that value is located. Yeah, that's right. So if we actually had an, another way of getting to it, we could, if we could get to that piece of memory, we would see the value 100. Yeah. Because that's where in memory number is currently stored. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if we then, now the other thing we could do, we can use the pointer, uh, we, we can use it to read the value like we've done here where we printed the value out. We can also assign a value to that location. So if we get the pointer and we follow that pointer, so use the same symbol again, yeah. uh, then, and we put that on the left-hand side of an assignment uh, statement, mm -hmm. it means take the value on the right-hand side and assign it to wherever that pointer points to. Oh, yeah. So it means follow, you know, get the value 200 and store it. Where do we store it? Well, where that pointer points to. Yeah, yeah, so at that location in memory. Yeah, so that will be the... Or the, the number variable. Yeah, that's right, because yeah. I pointer points to the number variable, we follow that pointer and it store the value in that, that location in memory. So when we print it out, we can print out again, we can print out the num value of the number variable and it will have changed to 200. Mm -hmm. And we can also print it out using the pointer. Yeah. Uh, you can also copy pointers from one variable to another. So we have that y variable, which yep. is also a pointer to an integer. And I could just say y is assigned uh, the value of i pointer. Yeah. And that will copy the address from i pointer into y. Mm -hmm. So now y will be pointing to? Number. That's right. So now the really cool thing is we actually have three different ways of accessing the value at that location in memory. So we can access it via the number variable, which was the actual variable itself. We can access it via I pointer. So we can get the I pointer, follow that pointer. That will take us to the number variable. We can go to it via the Y variable as well. Um, I think there's one problem with this. I mean, we could just use the number variable throughout this program, yeah? So this isn't what you would use pointers for. Okay. But it's just demonstrating the different symbols and how we use them. Yeah. Uh, so basically with pointers, you can do a couple of things. You can... Uh, well, you need to be able to do a couple of things. You need to be able to get the address of something. Yeah. Uh, and then you, that is a pointer. Mm -hmm. You could then store that in a, in a pointer variable. Uh, you then need to be able to follow that pointer. Yep. So follow yeah. the pointer to the address that it leads to and get the value. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Or put the value there. Okay. Yeah. So do, whether we're reading or writing to that location in memory. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's really it. Uh, other than that, a, a pointer variable is just like a normal variable. So you can read the value of the variable. You can store new values in that variable. You could pass it to another function if you wanted to. So we could pass the address of that number variable to a, to a procedure or, and do something. Yeah. You know, follow that pointer and then change the value in that variable from somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, and actually, here's, here's another example I've got that does exactly that. So this is... Uh, a program that swaps two numbers in memory. Okay. So in main here, we've got seed number A and number B. Yep. We store five and ten in there. And then we call the, the swap procedure and we pass in the, the address of number A yep. and the address of number B. So inside swap, first and second will point to, well, first will point to uh, number A. And second will point to number B. Yeah. Yeah. And then the code inside here reads the so it reads the value of the first pointer. That's yep. the address of number A. Mm -hmm. We follow that, so we actually go to that address. Yeah. So follow that pointer. We read the value, so that would be five. And we store that in temp. Yep. Yeah. Then on the next line, well, we follow the second. We read the second pointer. That's the address of number B. We follow that, and so we get the value ten. Yeah. And we store that over the top of the first pointer. Yeah, or the, we follow the first pointer, so that's actually going to store it over the top of... Number A. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, number A and number B are both 10 back in main. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then we need to put the 5 back, which is why we stored it in temp. Yeah. We read the value of temp, which is an integer, so that's just the number 5. Yep. And we can store that where? Well, we get the second pointer, which is the address of number b b yeah. thank you <laughs> we then follow <laughs> follow that pointer 
uh, and we store the value there. So yeah. this is actually going to store five into you know, number B in in main. Yeah. So when that procedure ends, we have done exactly what it says it's going to do: swap, you know, the number A mm -hmm. and the number B. So this is some case where pointers are actually useful because yeah. it, it lets us sort of break down that divide between these two procedures. Oh yeah, yeah. Because now the pr parameters in that swap are able to manipulate the values from main. Yeah. Uh, now this is actually a very common way that we use pointers. So some languages support a feature called pass by reference. Yeah. Pass by reference allows the you to tell the language to do all of that pointer magic for you. It's yeah. just pointers. Like there's no real magic. But the compiler is taking care of the pointers for you. So what we can do when we declare the uh, the procedure, we can indicate that we want those parameters passed by reference. Okay, so this is doing basically what you were doing before with pointers, but the compiler is handling that for you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it does all of it. It does the getting the address yep. of number A and number B in main. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we use first and second inside the procedure, yeah. it's dereferencing those pointers for us. Yeah, yeah. So we don't have to actually see it. And you can think about this uh, as being the fact that we pass across a variable to each one of these. So I'm passing across a variable to first and second. Yeah, okay. Uh, not just the value, but the variable. Yeah. Because we can then read and change the value in that variable that we get given. There is one limitation, of course. When we call swap, we now have to pass in two integer variables. We can't pass in, like, the number five. Yeah. And the number 10. Yeah. Uh, because you can't get the address of a number in a, in a program. You can only get the address of a, a, a variable. variable. Okay. Yeah. So, look, taking all that into account, is there any way that we can sort of implement pointers into my uh, my friend book application? Okay, well, this is... So, what we wanted to be able to do here, so you wanted to have inside... You've got a person uh, record here. Yeah. And each person, you've got a name and an email. Uh, and then what do you want to be able to do? Uh, basically, what I want is I want each person to be able to have a friend. So. Yeah. You know, you could ask me, who is your friend? And I could point to that friend. Yeah. Per oh, that's a, well, that sounds like it is for using pointers. <laughs> yeah. So that's exactly right. So what we could do uh, in here is we can declare a, a pointer to your, your person data okay. record. Uh, and we could have that as the each person data record could have the name, email address, and a friend. And the friend will be a pointer to another person data value. Yeah. Uh, and this will enable, you know, for example, me to be your friend, you yeah. to be my friend at the same time. Yep. Uh, which we couldn't do if we tried to copy that data in there. Imagine if we could somehow copy like the person data into, so each person had a name, friend, and then the data related to that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that wouldn't work because we would have end up with, you know, duplicate copies yeah. of each person in uh, throughout your program. So yeah, using a pointer is the way we can do this. Now that would mean uh, what we can do back here in your read person function, yep. uh, we can assign uh, the person or the friend for the person that we're reading in uh, nothing to start with. Yeah. There's a special pointer, it's called the null pointer. Mm -hmm. And that repr that is what we use to say this pointer currently points to nothing. Yeah. So this is a way of saying that when we read the person in, they don't have a friend at that point. And okay. we can assign that later on. Yeah. Uh, we can then use that when we print them out, so we can check if the person's uh, if the friend is is not nothing. We can then print out the friend's name. Yeah, yeah, yep. So the way we would do that is access the the to print, which is a a person. Yep. Yeah. When we access the friend, that's going to be a that's a pointer. Yep. Yeah. So if we follow that pointer, what is what's at the other end? Uh, a, a person. Yeah. Yeah. And so we could then get their name. Yeah. And so we could print out the name of the friend of the person to print. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the way I would think about it. So you've got the to print is a person. We access friend, which is, as we said, it's a pointer. Yeah. We then follow that pointer and read the name. Yep. Now, of course, if friend is nil, that means... They don't have a friend. Yeah. Very <laughs> sad. <laughs> very. <laughs> and, and we would then print, you know, we could print out another message. So we wouldn't want... To, if we try to access that friend pointer that like we've done... Uh, back here, yeah, uh, and it was null. Then that would that would crash. Mm -hmm. So the program uh, would terminate because we've tried to read something that doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Okay, so now I can use the idea of pointers to you know, link the people together in my friend book program. So down here in main, I can get the address of other or my friend yep. and I can store that as my friend. Yeah, so yeah, that's all right. So you've got the, the me variable here and it has a friend field. Yeah. Uh, so we can, as you said, read the address of the other person yeah. and store that in me.friend. Okay. And, and that, so when we print that out, it should print out their name. Yeah. Well, do you want to run through how this is going to work? Okay, cool. So when the program starts, it starts at main. And as you can see, uh, there's two variables declared there, okay? Uh, yeah. Me and other. Yeah, so it allocates space big enough to store two person data values. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And as you can see here, uh, person data has a name, uh, an email, and a friend, which is our pointer. To yeah, a friend. So, so each one of those you know, variables is big enough to store all of that data. Yeah, that's, that's, that's correct. So after that memory has been allocated, uh, the program then needs to assign some data to our me variable first, all right? Yeah, so it executes, we've got here this assignment statement. Yeah. It executes the read person function and stores the result in me. Yeah, ex pr pr precisely. Yeah, cool. So let's, let's have a look at this read person function. Okay, so when read person executes, uh, we've got our result variable, which yep. is of type person data. Yep. So that's what the function is going to return. Yep, that's correct. Okay. It writes a, a, a simple prompt, which is what we specified yeah, what when we, we called the in. function. Yep, yep, that's correct. And then what we need to do is assign a value returned by read string to the result's name. Okay, cool. So what will we have the user type in as the string? What about Fred? What, what, because this is me, so we might as well make it. Let's make it you, Ruben. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, All right, so... Ruben, Ruben yeah, will do just you fine. You can be friends with Fred. <laughs> okay. All right, so Ruben is returned and we assign that to result's name. Mm -hmm. All right, and then... And then we call read string again and assign the result to the result's email. Yep, so what are we going to put in as your email? Uh, look, let's just put ruben at wilson.com. Okay. Yeah, that's, that'll do. Yep, cool. Uh, and that's going to be assigned there. Yep. And the last step... Well, the last step is because I don't have a friend at this point. At this time, point, yeah, at this point. Yeah, is uh, we're, we're going to assign uh, null as as my pointer to my friend. Yeah, so at this point you have nil, or null, yeah, no friend. Yeah. Uh, and then we return, so that then, the function ends, we return the result. So it's going to return all of that data back to main, mm -hmm. and it will all be stored into the me variable yeah so that means you're going to get a copy of your my name my email and well the friend value yeah yeah so all of that value all of those values get stored back in there because it's a, a record yeah cool all right so then the next line uh calls read person again uh -huh. and stores the result in other so let's go back to read person okay and same as before uh the function initializes its result variable which yep. is of type person data yep um, and we need to assign uh, the value returned by read string to the result's name. Yep. Okay. So this time we will use Fred. Yeah, we can yep. we can use Fred here. That's, yeah, that's fine. We call read string again to assign the result that, that returns to the result's email. So this uh, time it'll be Fred at Fred.com. Yep, that that'll do just fine. Yep. And, um, and we store as, that in result email. Yep. yep. And as before, uh, Fred doesn't have a friend just yet, so we want to assign the pointer to his friend as null. Yeah, and then we return that, and so that returns back the name, email, and friend data, because it's the, the record. Yeah. All of that data back, which we store into the other. other. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So now we're at the point where we need to be able to actually link those two values together. So link me, yep. okay, and other, which is Fred. Yep. And the way that we do that is we get the address of other here, yep. all righty, and we assign that to my friend. Yeah, okay. to and me.friend. Yeah, yeah. So, so that would actually put the address of that variable. And we can think of that as the point as a pointer, can't we? So we yeah. can actually say, you know, this, this variable here points to that bit of data over there. <laughs> exactly. So what was null before is now a pointer to uh, my yeah. friend Fred. Yeah, so it will be the address of that. Yeah. Cool. And then finally we call print person. Okay, and we're passing uh, the variable me as a parameter to that uh, to that procedure. Yeah, now this is actually being passed by reference. So that's actually using a... Pointer. Yeah, very cool, yeah. hey? And we didn't actually have to do any of that pointer magic. It, it gets the address for us there, and up the top here where we use it, it just follows it magically. Yeah, exactly. 
Okay, so in this um, in this procedure, we're going to print out uh, the name, my, my name. So that's going to be yeah, uh, Ruben. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my um, email, which was uh, Ruben at Wilson.com. Yep. Okay. And now we check your two print dot friend. So if we grab two print, now that's actually a pointer. So we follow that pointer because that's done automatic. Yeah. Automatically. Yeah. <laughs> for us because of the pass by reference, uh, and that gets us a pointer to me back in Maine. Yes. Uh, and we read the value of friend. Is that does that not equal null? Yes, that does not equal null. Yeah, that's right. So we've got actually well, there is actually a friend. You do have a friend at this point. <laughs> so we execute this line of code here. Yep. So that's going to print a little message uh, to the terminal that says that I am friends with my friend's name, which in this case so, is yeah. Fred. So we grab two print. Uh huh. We grab friend, which is a pointer. Yeah, and we yeah. follow that pointer. Yeah, and then we read the... The name. Yeah, because what we got at the end of the friend was the whole person. Yeah. yeah. We could actually have read his email address or name or found out who he was friends with. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, cool. And then print person finishes and that's the, the end. End of the program. Okay, so we've got um, a couple of extra examples here. Uh, the first one is bank account. Yeah, so the bank account has a, a customer. Okay. Yeah, so this way you could have multiple accounts that all had the same one customer. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and the other one I've got here is a player's turn. So in this game, we've got multiple players and they take it in turns. But we can have the current player is a pointer to one of the players. Okay. Uh, and that way we could change which player the current player is. Yeah. And from the game's perspective, we have always got a, a current player. Okay, that's it for pointers. Uh, pointers allow you to create flexible relationships within the data in your program. Uh, they allow you to refer to things. So rather than ha always having just the data itself, we now have a way of saying you know, the bit of data you want is actually uh, over there. So some of our other videos that you should check out uh, is the video on enumerations, okay? And we've also got one on records. Uh, so if you haven't already checked that out, you should probably check out our video on records. Yep, and if you're ready to move on, the next topic is probably a good one to check out is arrays. Arrays are pretty cool. Cool. Hope you've enjoyed that, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. This has been a Spindoin production.